I found that when life happens, the time you question your core values is not when you're attacked, but instead when you're made to wait. What are your core values? I'm Pastor John from Livingstones and Sunland Tonga Seventh-day Adventist Churches, and it is time for the call to prayer. Well, this is an episode in the 100s, and I need to memorize which episodes I'm on. I'm sorry, I always forget every single week until I'm there uploading, but um, it's wonderful to have you with me. And it's wonderful that you've been walking step by step through the journey of the early church after Jesus rose. Acts houses within it a power that can give us power. We realize that the church moved forward not because of just some miraculous miracles, but because of work that was done. And God walked hand in hand with Paul, Peter, and all of those apostles and all of those believers that made that church happen. So we're now in Acts chapter 27. He just finished with Festus as well as Agrippa. And if you'll remember, Agrippa asked the question of Paul. Paul was going through his whole thing. He had been there two years in Caesarea Maritime. And as he was there, he was pulling in Agrippa and Bernice, and even Festus to become Christian, to become those who follow the way. And then Agrippa says the words, you think that in such a short time, I'm going to become a Christian? (laughs) Yeah, Agrippa, I know. Agrippa died a bad death, actually. He had everything he wanted. And yet, he never had anything he wanted. Jesus said the words in Matthew and Luke as well. What profits a man or a woman to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Or what can a man or a person give in exchange for his soul. No money can buy yourself back. You gain the whole world, but you lost yourself. In this world today, we see that. We see so much. There are so many people with so many things. But what is the core value of your life? Is it something that lasts a short time? lasts as long as the sandwich is done, lasts as as short as the meal is over, lasts as short as the day at Disneyland is finished, lasts as short as the car is new, lasts as short as the marriage is short. I would hope you don't have a short marriage, but it is not your wife or your husband that saves you, gives you purpose. There's something deeper than that. You must have that hole in your heart filled by something that really matters. What is your core? And I'm sure when Agrippa said to him, do you think I'm going to become a Christian in this short time? I'm sure that hit Paul right here. Two years, nearly two and a half years in that prison cell, and yet nothing to show for it. Well, That's when you start asking yourself, God, are you anywhere? Are you out there? Yes, God said earlier, Jesus said to him, when in the prison cell there in Caesarea Maritime, I've called you to go to Rome. Paul appealed to Caesar, and to Caesar he was about to go. It says in chapter 27 that uh, Paul and the other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius. Now this guy Julius was from the Imperial Regiment. So he was um, he was an emperor regiment, one that directly connected with the emperor because the people who were sent there were appealing to Caesar. As a Roman citizen, Paul had that right 
to appeal to the top magistrate. It's kind of like appealing to the Supreme Court. And so now Rome will pay to have him sent across the oceans to Rome. But the only problem is it was fall. In the fall, after Atonement Day, the seas get rough. He boarded the boat there at uh, Jaffa or, or Caesarea Maritime, right? Like uh, 10 miles from Jaffa, where, where, remember, Jonah had gotten on a boat and started heading north. And as always, they would go along the coastways, you know, like this, one stop at a time, but moving along. As they move through the waters, they haul. And so they sailed from port to port. And uh, uh, they also then got to Sidon, where Julius then allowed Paul to meet many believers that knew him. If you'll remember, Tarshish is, or should I say, um, uh, Antioch, which is right near there, was a place where Paul had originally started preaching, and he was preaching there before the brothers in Jerusalem actually uh, tried to ignore him. He started preaching there. And uh, if you'll remember, it was um, Barnabas that then connected with him and said, let's go on our first missionary journey. That's way back in episode, I think, 70-something. And uh, maybe even earlier than that in our episodes. So he stopped there, he met many people, and then he got on the boat again. And then they started heading to across the deeper span as it kind of turned where modern day Turkey is, started to go and the headwinds got strong. It was after atonement day, so therefore it was fall and the winds are hitting the opposite direction and they kept trying different ways for the ship to get because they got ahead to the west, but the west is always so hard at this time of year to get across. They don't go through the middle of the Mediterranean. There are many ships that went to the bottom at that at that time but they go out and across and then they dock and then out and then across and then they dock it got hard and finally they came to a place called fair havens at this point they got near creaked now this one is called core what is your core when you're sitting on a ship and you're surrounded by prisoners and everyone you talk to about Jesus ignores you, laughs at you. They're maybe nice, but ignore what your message is. There's a hole that can start eating you up right here. Maybe in your life you're in one of those. You're so excited to do things that you believe are good. And yet you feel like you've been disconnected. There's a mission you believe that you need to do, and yet you're not able to do that mission because of this, this, and this. I'm sure he got depressed, and I've felt this before myself. I've been sitting on that boat in my life at times where you have a message to get out, and yet you're being stunted by politics and the powers that be. How do you hang on to the core? How do you take that and use that as rocket fuel? Well, you know how I take it? And I believe that the Bible's very clear about this. The reason why we feel depressed so many times in our lives is because we have a little narcissism in ourselves. We think about ourselves. The universe revolves around us. and We want to do something that we believe in. But we're not willing to wait for God because we don't have the patience that God does. Remember, to God, a thousand years are like one day, and one day like a thousand years. God does not judge time like we do. We view things differently than God does. When I'm pastoring, sometimes I feel like I'm beating my head against the wall. Seems like we're not growing in the way I want to grow. Not being able to get done the things that we need to get done. And so we continue to do that which we must so that we continue 
to grow, but in that slow way with the volunteers that are um, few and far between. But I don't see the future. God does. And that is the antidote to that hole in the heart. When you want to do something and you want to be something is to rely on him and say, God, whatever happens to me, I accept it. If I have zero success, to God be the glory. But I'm going to work my hardest to get done for God what I believe we must get done. Does that make sense? You have to act like you're going to have 100% success and be willing to accept zero success at the same time. And then God holds the reins. Therefore, we can give God the glory instead of ourselves. That's the ultimate anti-narcissist. God is not our echo. We are his. My friends, my friends, I love you so much. I love you not because I'm a good person, not because I'm John Aiken, but because Jesus loves you. And that's where I gain my power to love. That's where I and you must gain our power to do something good, not expecting anything in return, unconditionally. And then, if we do do that, God will give us results. But it won't be in the way we think. We have to be willing that he be the leader. And you know, that means something. That means something major because we're about ready to hit some storms. The storm is coming. And the Old Testament, Shaitan, Satan, Lucifer, does not want Paul to go to Rome because he knows that once Paul goes to Rome, there will be power. Paul doesn't know this. God does. Okay, it's great having you here. Remember, like, subscribe, and in the next few moments, it's almost 7.15, intercession. Stay with the channel, stay on Facebook, and connect with intercession, and we go through the prayer requests. We'll be quick. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you in a second. Bye-bye.